This, this meeting is all about uh, keyhole or minimal access liver surgery, which is otherwise called laparoscopic liver resection. There are indications such as liver cancers and sometimes non-cancerous lumps or nodules in the liver that need to be taken out. In the olden days, what we used to do is just do a big cut in the abdomen, which is more than 20, 30 centimeters sometimes if you, if you connect it and, and remove it. But that has a lot of complications. After the operation, they have a lot of pain. They cannot go home for many days. They have to be in hospital. They cannot breathe properly. Because of that, they have chest infections. Whereas, when we do it laparoscopically, the day after or the day after that, they are sitting up in bed. They are walking around. By four days, five days, they are wanting to know when they can go home. So this is a, a, a very bad disease for which the cure has been very bad until now. But now we have tried to minimize the morbidity associated with the process involving the care. So we decrease the complication, we decrease the symptoms and the problems that the patients have after the operation. That's the whole point of doing it minimal access or keyhole or laparoscopic liver resection. There are three big diseases that is increasing the burden of liver cancers and liver problems. One is hepatitis B, hepatitis C and what we called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is otherwise known as metabolic syndrome where people who are obese and sometimes in our country even patients who are not obese have fatty liver disease. Hepatitis B and C as you know is because of a virus. We have very good treatment for hepatitis B nowadays although C treatment is a little bit more complex. All these things causes scarring in the liver which increases the risk of cancers happening in the liver. So if you try and look at the numbers involved, it is huge, which is why we wanted awareness that is to be public. Let us say there's about 20 to 30 million patients with hepatitis B in our country, about 15 to 20 million patients with hepatitis C. About 15 to 16 percentage of the population has got either pre-diabetes or diabetes because of our genetic makeup. So when you look at the numbers, there are thousands of people affected with liver disease. But unfortunately, because the detection is slow and diagnosis is late, often only about 30% are actually operable. Even the 30% if you look, we need to do about 15 to 20,000 liver resections, that is liver surgeries in our country. And many of them may not be suitable for the laparoscopic approach, but about half of them are. So at least about 10,000. But currently, we are hardly doing less than 1,000 liver resections, which is uh, very unfortunate and sad. And we would like to make sure that patients come to us early so that we can operate on them and hopefully cure them. In that early liver cancer, often there is no symptoms. And therefore, if you wait until symptoms develop, sometimes it is too late. So what can you do? Well, first thing is you can automatically change your lifestyle and try and get into a better lifestyle, more exercise, less fat, try and not be obese and simple things like that. Obviously, do not abuse alcohol because that will definitely cause liver disease. A very small drink here and there doesn't matter, but regular use of alcohol you should try and avoid. So these are the simple things that you can do. Once you have a sort of things, very non-specific symptoms, like feeling a little bit tired, uh, something is not right, weight loss, these are things that need to be taken seriously. Get a simple blood test done, get a simple ultrasound done, these are very inexpensive, but do diagnose problems early. If you have had an ultrasound for some other cause and they said fatty liver disease, then keep an eye on it. In another two years or three years time, at least take another ultrasound scan to see how the liver is doing now. And immediately try and move those lifestyle changes to what I described earlier. Later on in the disease, jaundice, which is yellowness of the eyes and skin, weight loss, increasing size of the abdomen, a lump or a mass in the abdomen, uh, pain in the abdomen, these are all classic symptoms of liver cancer. Other way around, open resection is a large incision, lot of pain, laparoscopy, less pain. Because the incision has to heal, the patients have to stay longer with, with a large incision. And because of the pain, patients don't breathe uh, very well after an operation. And therefore, 
the fact that they have small incisions means that there is no pain and therefore they can breathe normally. The advantage of this is that the chest complications like pulmonary infections, lung infections have all decreased after laparoscopic liver surgery. Blood loss is much reduced in laparoscopic liver surgery. Wound related problems afterwards like hernia operations and, and things are not required as often in laparoscopic liver resection. Simple message is if you think you might have a health problem, get it investigated. If you have a simple ultrasound and a, and a simple blood test, often that is all you need to make sure that your liver is, is okay. That's the first point. The second point is, if you have had an ultrasound that shows an abnormality in the liver, don't ignore it. Make sure you consult a specialist. To me, it's not important where you go to, which doctor you see. What is important is that you go to somebody who is competent, who can look at the scan and say what is best for you. If that requires surgery or transplantation or, uh, or whether it's just medicines.